I wanted to talk to you uh, about an idea, because TED celebrates ideas. And in fact, everything starts with an, uh, an idea. If you think about it, the chair you are sitting on, your clothes, your phone, this building, everything was uh, once someone, somebody's idea. And I'm really fascinated by ideas um, in the sense that I think all of us at some point must have been somebody's idea. Our parents must have had an idea that they wanted a child. And when we were born, they must have had an idea of what sort of children uh, they wanted us to be. But what I'm really interested in is, have you ever thought of um, your own idea of you? What is your own idea of you? I think we all start as, you know, as an idea, as, um, as these guys started flying. And at the time, it was really inconceivable that one day humans are going to be flying. But guess what we are doing now every day? So um, I think we sometimes really need to challenge ourselves on our limits and uh, limits in terms of our imagination. So we all start in very similar ways. We are born into uh, a family, a community, and a society. And we all start with about 29,200 days to the age of around 80. That's the average life expectancy for us. So days just like today. And if you're a weekender, and if you actually go into a job that you don't really enjoy, and you spend five days a week there, you are usually, well, you are left with about 8,400 weekend days. But that is for your entire lifetime. So if you think about this, you know, by the time we actually start to live our own lives, when, which is around, I think, when I ask people, they say about mid-20s, one-third of that is already gone, okay? So, um, so how are we going to live a really good life, really? Um, I, just, I just really want you to start thinking about this. When we are born into a family or a community and a society, we, we are expected to be a certain way. We learn rules, limitations, and expectations. Our parents um, expect certain things from us. They teach us from right, right from wrong. And uh, what happens, that we, we just kind of mold into these systems. And at the age of five, we go into education. And education starts to introduce us to this really interesting idea of a gap. So you move into a school, and they start to measure you. They start to label you. You, start, you need to start somehow close to, to close this gap to an A. We are always aiming for an A in whatever it is that we are actually doing. But what is this um, gap ac actually creating in our lives? We pick up a lot of labors about ourselves. We have some, uh, some of the labors come from our teachers, from the people who are around us. And we start to form this, this view of ourselves that um, may, not, may, may or may not be the true, uh, the true view of um, ourselves. So when we come out of education, we look like this. We are covered in post-it notes, and there are loads and loads of labors on it, usually uh, about our abilities, all sorts of things. But if you think about getting A's in your, in your education, what does it really mean? Does it really reflect your capabilities? We know this from history, that you know, throughout uh, education, the education system, um, the, um, the grading doesn't really mean much. So I just want, you to, I want to challenge you to start peeling off your labels today a little bit and start really examining them and start thinking about the, um, the actual um, systems that you were actually born, uh, born into and what sort of second-hand beliefs you picked up from these systems. Because these, these beliefs are usually built on navigating the past. What happens is the education and all of these systems are actually trying to take us into the future that we cannot grasp with beliefs and rules based on the past. So that's a really, really interesting concept here. 
Um, I, want to, I, want to, I want you to just imagine going into your walking chair at the end of your life. And when you're looking back on your life and when you're looking back on your memories, recognize that the only consistent thing is you, is the observer in you. So there are going to be some fun memories, there are going to be some sad memories, there are going to be some, uh, and when, I, when I look at some of my pictures, I, I think, gosh, I, I can't believe I looked like that, or I said that, or I did that. We all have done things that we, we really don't believe it was actually us, but it was, it was us. So the observer in you does not like regrets. So I would like to challenge you to start thinking about the decisions that you're making in your life from your rocking chair and how happy would you be with actually living a life that you are actually making decisions for um, when you actually get to that point in your life. When I go to my rocking chair, uh, what happens is um, that I look back on my life and I realize that one of the most important times of my life was when I was 14. And my country um, moved from communism to democracy. Now, democracy normally means freedom uh, to people. But to me and to my family, it meant utter chaos. And our lives started to fall apart. Because, because of privatization and what this, this whole move meant in the country, um, my dad lost his job alongside thousands of others, actually. And because he was, um, he, he was brought up in an oil system that taught you that a, a job for, was for a lifetime. And you were going to retire from it. And if you lost it for any reason at all, you should, you should be ashamed of yourself. So um, it, really, it really knocked him. And alongside, you know, watching him going through this pain in his life was really, really... In, uh, uh, an interesting experience for me. And uh, for my whole family, kind of going through this experience was a very, very difficult time. Um, and I suddenly started to realize that all of these systems that we actually grew up in and everything that you take for granted, if you start living in these, you know, you don't really think about what happens if it changes. So the country actually um, was in chaos for a long period of time because guess what happened? The, the old rules no longer applied, and nothing really worked like it did in the old system, but there were no new rules yet. So people were kind of floating in this, in this dimension that was nobody knew how to navigate the unknown and uh, the uncertainty. So uh, that was the, 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 the system, actually, in terms of the society I was born in. But then another part of my uh, system fell apart when um, actually at the, when I was 20, he, um, my dad passed away um, because he had a stroke and I didn't actually expect you know, to, him to go so suddenly. But it's just really interesting, again, once again, you know, my life was moving into the unknown and, um, and everything seemed to have been moving beneath our feet. So you really can't predict what's going to be happening. So all of this, uh, all of this un in all of this uncertainty, a few years later, I actually, I actually started to um, think about this idea that I was brought up with this idea, actually, that... Um, there's this unwritten rule of success somewhere hidden in the world. I don't know whether you have this in your countries, but when I was growing up, it said that if you became a doctor, a lawyer, or an accountant, you would be truly happy, right? And I fell for it, and um, so I started studying law. And um, one of the requirements was that uh, I, would, I would learn a third language. So my journey actually brought me to England. And when I got here, I obviously came with my, uh, with my old system. So I started looking, looking at this new world through my you know, old eyes. And, and everything that I learned and picked up in my old system, I brought into this one. And things didn't quite work, um, work out really well for me. So for a while, I was looking for my steering wheel. And I kept going to the wrong side of the car all the time. I don't know whether this happened to you. Or the other thing. Um, <laughs> burning and freezing my hands. What was that all about? 
I, I still can't understand that. Okay, and I've been, I've, been, I've been living here for 18 years, right? But this is really interesting because our brains are so used to certain things and they're really lazy and they love status quo, okay? And this is why we love routines and they, the, the brain find it, finds it really, really difficult to get into a new system. This is why we don't really uh, like actually being, uh, being challenged on... Um, uh, on our lives, but what of the, you know, aside from all of this, what I didn't expect to find in England was my true self. Um, really interestingly, I somehow existed in this world, which I only realized when I actually got here, uh, when I didn't actually speak the language, so I had no labels for myself. All of my old labels from my old systems were actually they, they, didn't, they didn't actually apply. So, and I had no new labels yet for myself. So I, st I somehow existed between language and reality whilst I was studying English. And um, it really made me think about who I actually was or whether these old labels actually still applied. So think about it in this way. Um, when um, when a, a song speak to, speaks to your soul or you look at a work of art, and the language becomes redundant. You just don't need any words for those. Do, have you ever had an experience that you couldn't quite put into words? You know when you just couldn't quite find the words for a feeling that you felt or something that had happened? That's how I kind of felt in this, um, in this new world here. So I started playing with an idea and I came across <clears throat> this idea of if no one told you who you were, who would you be? And you know what? Um, how do we do, deal with the unknown? We don't really like the unknown. So I was already really scared. So I started putting myself into experiences that I was really, really scared of. And that would really uh, challenge me. But actually, I started really playing with the idea of who would I be if I didn't know where I, where I came from or I didn't know any of the previous labels I put on myself. What sort of things would I like? What would be my passion? What is it that I actually really am excited about in life? And if I was scared, I knew that fear was just a sign that on the other side of that was my happiness somewhere. So be very mindful of this in your life. If you're really scared of doing something, make yourself do it, because the more you are getting outside of your comfort zone, the more you are going to be getting um, a, a deeper knowledge of yourself and of your own self, and you are going to be stretching the idea of who you actually are. I really want you to consider yourself as a piece of art, Okay, go beyond labels, go beyond language. Think about who you are if you can't actually use words to, to express who you actually are. So um, how would you write your own story? In your lives, you, you are soon going to be writing your next chapter. So really think about how you want to write your life and how you want to actually look back on your life from your rocking chair. Now, um, I think when there's uncertainty in our lives, um, if we look at it as opportunity and we start putting ourselves outside of our comfort zones, we are really going to find who we actually truly are. And um, I really challenge you to do that. I want you to start thinking about not waiting for the weekend or not waiting for Monday. You know, um, we go to bed sometimes thinking that tomorrow I'm going to start running. Tomorrow I'm going to the gym. Tomorrow I'm changing my diet. Don't wait. I see some of you smiling. Don't wait um, until tomorrow. Do it today, okay? Because the 29,200 is sticking for all of us. And because I asked you to challenge yourselves to do something that makes you feel really uncomfortable, I thought, you know what, I'm going to challenge myself to do the same. So um, I've kind of written a poem, which is, I've never done this before, but um, I'm going to read this to you, okay? Um, and I really want you to uh, think about some of the concepts uh, that are in here. The true you. You are not your name or your title or your cage. You are not your height or your gender or your age. You are not your body or your crippling fears. 
You are not your thoughts or your rolling tears. You are not where you come from or your language or your face. You are not your passing happiness or your overwhelming rage. You are not who they told you you were. Have faith in yourself and shape your own world. You are a limitless idea. Your soul is your guide. You are who you dare dream with the stars by your side. You are your only limit to yourself, so go and explore. You are your favorite song that speaks to your soul. You are a million things, so challenge yourself and enjoy. Go do it now, get out there and soar. Love yourself, love your life, you're truly unique. Create, carve and inspire and laugh at your fears. At the end of your glorious journey, you will look back and smile because you beat all the odds and you became who you are. Thank you.